Well, welcome to Johnny Stewart and Friend. I got a pretty good friend here. Pretty good size friend here. Right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. It's actually, this in 3D. In, in 3D, and in, in this case, the size is to your advantage. Right. Yeah. Right. Size matters. That's right. Size and everything's matters. bigger in Texas. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And the bigger, the better. It's, yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay. Well, we have here with us Alex. Kool Aid Ansel. Kool Aid is your kind of a stage name that a lot of nickname, people started yeah. calling. Nickname, right? yeah. I had to hop myself up. What's up? Um, yeah, I got the nickname in middle school because uh, kids are jerks. And uh, I was wearing a red shirt. It was a little snug on me. You still got the yeah, shirt on? I still do, is yeah. Is that the exact same shirt? Uh, no, this is the one they gave me at Circuit City when I used to work for them. Oh, okay. uh, But no, it's got all my logos and stuff on there now. So, haha. Okay. I This is not because I sell used Buicks. Hit me up for that later. Uh, but no, so I got the nickname Kool-Aid because, um, you know, just, you know, somebody said, oh, you look like the Kool-Aid man. And I was like... Okay, there's worse things to be called. Yeah. And I just kind of went with it. You know, okay. kind of took something that some might see as a weakness and kind of flipped it and turned it and used it as my strength. And, and somehow yeah. uh, we're associated together because I'm working with him and we're mm -hmm. directing a show uh, called Squeeze, right? Honk, honk. Yes, yeah, Squeeze. The, the funny side of losing weight. Sorry. The, there that's you go. good. No, no. I yeah. want you to talk more than I do. You know everything, <laughs> and I'm with you, you buddy. I the don't. funny side of losing weight. <laughs> Absolutely. And you got two beautiful dancers in the show. I do. I Gorgeous. do. There's yeah. There's uh, four lovely young ladies total that I've been rehearsing with, and uh, we're gonna have two at a time at a show, and they're amazing. Uh, they're so talented, and uh, yeah, my email address is older than them. Uh, so I had to, you know, realize yeah, that. Give your email address. They'd like to have it. <laughs> yeah, they all want to call you. The whole world's uh, going to know you. I'll give you my Snapchat. You can hit me up on that. Uh, Y2 Kool-Aid. I don't know if y'all can see it on camera right there, but we just get the Y2 Kool-Aid on there. That's all my social media info out there. Uh, the big thing I've been doing now is playing Nintendo Switch. And, uh... You can, you can, I'll email you my Switch friend code, and we can play Mario Kart online. So they just go to <laughs> Y2, yep. Y, and then a 2, Number two, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, with a K, yeah, K-O-O-L-A-I-D. And that takes you to your all your social media. Yo, well, that's just my social media name, or go to alexansel.com. Alex Ansel, A-N-S-E-L. Yeah. Damn right. Right? Heck yeah. Okay. So you're going to be doing this show, and you mm -hmm. somehow became and are, for the last 10 years, a stand-up comic. That's right. That's right. I okay. just uh, I kind of got into stand-up comedy for two reasons. One, I've always had a great respect and love of comedy. When I would come home from school, I always had the TV on in my room on Comedy Central. So while I was studying, if I was reading something or, or playing on my Game Boy or something, I'd always just have Comedy Central on just... That was my background noise for the longest time. Always had a great respect to comedy. Loved, uh, you know, comedians uh, growing up. Uh, watched a lot of um, Sam Kinison, Pryor. Loved Carlin. Loved the way Carlin would play with words. And that's the way I kind of look at, at uh, you know, I love clever wordplay and stuff like that. But uh, I would always have comedy on and, and you know, I would kind of use comedy as a defense mechanism when people would try to make fun of me. They tried. They do. But I would get them back. Harder than so, they think they could. So it doesn't doesn't upset you. It actually yeah. challenges you if they try to make fun of you. Well, it's like, yo, I know I'm fat. And the jokes I do about my fatness are uh, ten times harsher and ten times funnier than you coming up to me and saying some dumb crap. So it's like, yeah, please, I've heard it. You know, whatever. But I got into stand-up because I got tired of hearing my friends tell me, you should do stand-up. You're really funny. Why don't you do stand-up? And so I, I had graduated college. And, uh, you know, kind of didn't know what to do with, with my life. And I loved stand-up. So I was like, you know what? I'll try it. And I went to uh, an open mic. I went to two open mics in one day. Wow. Because I knew that stand-up comedians do multiple shows in a day. I knew that much. I was like, if I'm going to do stand-up, I want to do it like they do it. And I uh, did two open mics. One in San Antonio, Texas, my hometown. Go Spurs Go. 210. What's up, baby? A uh, little shout out. And then uh, the second one was in Austin, Texas, which is about an hour, hour and, and ten you're minutes from away. San Antonio. Texas. I am from San Antonio. I claim it. Windcrest. Put your W's up. That's right. It's kind of like a white suburb of San Antonio, but 
So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I did two shows in one night and open mics. And both nights I just kind of read the jokes off my index cards. And I'd read the joke and I'd look up and I'd get a laugh and read the next joke. And I got a smaller laugh. I went, eh. And then do the next one. And, eh, you know. Sometimes a bigger laugh. Yeah, so, yeah, there you go. And uh, so ten years later, now I'm here. <laughs> okay, now look. Las Vegas. A show called Squeeze mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. the two beautiful girls. Right. And some great music, some great dancing. Yeah. Yes. Great video, all singing kinds and of dancing. great stuff, right? Yeah, and that show is going to open up on the 23rd of this month on yep. a Friday. That's yep. not tomorrow, but a week from this Friday, which is the 23rd of February. Yep. And it's at 9 o'clock at Treasure Island. Treasure okay. Island. Beautiful hotel, beautiful yeah. casino. And it's in the great restaurant and kind of an activity center, yeah. which is called Senior Frogs. Senior Frogs. Yeah, they've got about 25 of those. You want to see my frog world. impression? Yeah. <laughs> I it. love it. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. And it's and pretty cool because it's kind of full circle for me because... When I first started doing stand-up in San Antonio, there's, uh, of course, it's San Antonio, so there's Mexican restaurants all over the place. And um, I would do open mics during the week at different Mexican restaurants. Martha's. Shout out to Martha's out there. Uh, Andy Coach Pastron. And, uh, yeah, a bunch of great people got me, you know, involved and would say, hey, keep coming out, keep coming out. And uh, so I would do kind of, you know, open mics and jokes in these Mexican restaurants. And now i got my own show on the Vegas Strip. That's right. In a Las casino. Vegas in a casino. Treasure Island. At Senior Frogs. Senior Frogs. A Mexican restaurant. So life yeah. has come full circle, and I love that idea. I mean, because two years ago, I was headlining show at a flea market. The Eisenhower Flea Market. Shout outs. Uh, I was headlining a Saturday comedy show, 2.30 in the afternoon. And then a year ago, I got my first headlining gig in Vegas at Plenty Hollywood. And now I have my own show, regular show on the strip. It's... It's been pretty crazy, pretty humbling, and just I just keep plugging away and, and it's, stuff it's happens. It's actually not going to offend anybody. It's going yeah. to be the funny side of losing weight. Exactly, you exactly. Know. Yeah, if, uh, you know, uh, it. I don't want to like hurt anybody, but if no. it makes you, you know, realize or or you go, you know what, I do that too, or oh, I've been there too. If it kind of gives you a little wake up call, I'm cool with that. But I think a lot of people are going to be able to kind of connect and see the same struggles that we've all been through there and just kind of dealing with the American lifestyle and kind of like, you know, looking at what different companies are doing to you. They, You know, McDonald's and, and other fast food places, they don't care about what they're putting out. They're, they care about the numbers, what they're selling. And they're selling what people want to eat, but does it mean that it's good for them? So, you know, you got to make people more more conscious and more aware of what you're putting into your body so that's what i well, hope your show's at nine o'clock mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh every day except saturday except saturday yeah, yep, yeah that's, right. that's true and that's true and uh, therefore uh you're going to be there and doing that and uh you're sharing the funny side of losing weight yep. and your history and everything along with that yeah and this show is sponsored by unicorn network they've formed a company here in las vegas called vegas entertainment partners there we go Inc. Right? Something like that, sure, there yeah. It is, Vegas Entertainment uh, Partners. When it, when it says that on my check, I'll confirm. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I, I'm fortunate enough that they asked me to be the president of that company. Hello, so Mr. President. Very, May I shake I'm your very hand? I'm excited to have there you, you here you. on the show with one of our shows. Now, I Vegas guess. Entertainment Partners is actually opening four shows within a two-month period. That's insane. That's it, crazy. It, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm but glad to be great, part of it. A yeah. great challenge for Dan Setgast and Nicole, yep. his wife. Yep. They're the main uh, principals of the company of Unicorn yep. and so forth. And uh, so they have offices over here in Summerlin, just yep. off of Lake Mead West. Yep. And uh, they're just a, a real strong You should give out company. more details. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get more. So anyway. And they're German, which is cool because I'm half German. And uh, I get to practice and use my German when I'm uh, hanging out with them. And, That's uh, right. And it tickles them pink every time I use it. And it's awesome. So. And, and they had Vegas mm -hmm. Entertainment Partners, mm -hmm. uh, the people involved in that, P Pete uh, Demas and yep. also uh, Steve. Uh, 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 who's Steve? Steve. I've got to help me with Steve. Arnold, oh, Arnold. Steve it, Arnold. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. Steve Arnold. <laughs> and, and also Ron Garrett, who used to be the entertainment director. Yeah, Ron A. What's up, Ronnie? Uh, at the Sahara. I've worked with Ron years and yeah. years, okay? And they're here, part of Vegas Entertainment Partners. And we've opened two shows already. Yep, now, yep. yours is only going to open Friday the 23rd. Heck yeah. But we've opened already 
That's Vegas. That's Vegas is open, and that plays at Bally's in the window yep. showroom, right? Yep. Yep. And that plays at 2 o'clock every day except Wednesday. Yeah. And that has some great performers in it. Absolutely. Yeah. I got to meet uh, the lady who plays uh, Britney Spears. Oh, you did? Yeah, I got to meet oh. her. She's great. Got to, uh, I, uh, I got a photo with her, and in the caption I put, I'm being cast as Kevin Federline. And a Lifetime original movie. That's Katie Murdoch. <laughs> yeah, Katie Murdoch. Great it, lady. The show starts off with uh, uh, a, a stand-up uh, uh, impressionist comic, yep, right? Yeah, uh, uh, Rich Natoli. Rich and Natoli, And he does yep. that. And then uh, it goes into Katie Murdoch that right. does Britney Spears. Fantastic. And, uh, you got to see it. she's done Britney Spears and Legends and other places, mm -hmm. which I created Legends almost 37 years ago. That's amazing. Yeah. Huh? Oh, I'm not even that old. I, I, must have done it, I must have done it before I came here. Probably, oh, okay, okay. probably. Anyway, yeah. so then uh, then it goes into, uh, also it goes in, into uh, a, a magician. Yeah. A tremendous magician. Adam. Adam Flowers. Super funny, too. Adam yeah. Flowers. He yeah. does some great tricks. And then, of course, it goes into one of the world's favorite and best Michael Jackson tributes, E. Casanova Evans. He's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Heck and yeah. it closes his show there. And that also has dancers in it. And yep. Comedy and magic and everything. So it's called That's Vegas. That's Yeah. And Vegas. then at 10 o'clock at night, every day except Wednesday, mm -hmm. they have Carl Laveau. One of my he favorites. Is, oh, what a great Also comic. from Texas, born in Fort Worth, where I was born. He was? Fort Worth. Oh, yeah, but he was military brat, so he moved around, but we're both born in Fort Worth. We found well, out we have that in common. That particular show is at 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. and again, over there in the Ken Walker Theater called Windows. Yep. And uh, that theater... Uh, Super easy to get three, to. Yeah, Super easy to get to. Yeah, holds about 300 people. It's a real yeah, nice, definitely. quaint theater. And the one at Senior Frogs holds about 300 also. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be great. Oh, it's going to be gonna amazing. You're going to love these shows. So this company, in the last couple of months, has challenged themselves to open two Common, unbelievable yeah. shows. Just Two at Bally's and two at Treasure Island. Absolutely. It's oh, going to be wow. amazing. Have they ever really given it themselves and everyone else It seems like they're just handing out shows, but they're not. But they're they not. picked <laughs> great people to do it, like yourself. They did. You're I, a yay. great person, a great comic, it and was, a great yeah. person. It was so weird how uh, they approached me. How did they approach you? How did they approach me? Um, they came out and saw me at a show, both Dan and Pete. And uh, they talked to me and they said, hey, uh, do you know blah, blah, blah from Austin, Texas, Spanky? Do you know Mark Riccadonna, New York, Philly area? And I go, yeah. And they go, well, we talked to them about doing a comedy weight loss show. And they both said your name. And I was like, wait, what? Whoa. okay, whoa. That, that, you know, from two different comics, from two different places would go, oh, I know who'd be perfect for this and then say my name. Of course, that's when you and were heavy. You're not heavy now. Yeah, there you yeah, go. You've, you've, <laughs> you've lost 400 pounds, haven't you? Uh, I've lost, uh, the most I've lost at a time was uh, 170, and that was when I was uh, doing a lot of uh, DDP yoga and juicing. But then when you stop doing that, you gain the weight back. That's crazy, right? <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, I definitely want to... it plays to your advantage right now. Yeah, I could, yeah you know, there you go, because you can't have a skinny guy yelling at fat people, but you can have a fat guy do jokes about it. So <laughs> I'm cool with that, but... What I, what I want to do with the show is, you know, inspire folks and, and show them. Because when I did lose the weight and I was practicing when I was preaching and doing all that, and I was touring the country with Jake the Snake Roberts. What's up? Shout out, Jake the Snake. What's up? Um, and I would tell people how Jake inspired me to kind of get on the right track and take better care of myself. People, I would get messages from people show after show after show, no matter where I was. Hey, do you have any juicing recipes? Hey, do you... Uh, Oh, it's so inspiring. Hey, what, what's your meal plan? Uh, what do you recommend here and there? And uh, I kind of miss that because, you know, I haven't been doing it. But I, I want to, you know, have myself be held accountable and share what I've learned and, you know, make it funny, make it entertaining and build an online community as well so that we can, uh, you know, trade juicing recipes, uh, workout tips, uh, stuff to keep us all motivated. And uh, because when I saw the likes and the shares I was getting from sharing progress, of my weight loss and, and my healthier lifestyle, it just it just boosted me, man. I would just get so hyped off of it, and it would keep me going and keep me motivated. And uh, you know, it's it's always better to you know spread the positivity and uh, and share that with others. You know. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So this coming a week from tomorrow, yeah, Friday the twenty third, day after my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, Dad! What's up? Love you. Mwah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Okay. And the fact is that. The other show that they uh, 
that has been produced by Vegas Entertainment mm -hmm. Partners is the 7 o'clock show there. Yep. And that'll be just before your show. Your yep. show's at 9. Right. And at 7 o'clock, they have a show called Beyond Reality. Beyond uh, Which is reality. hypnosis over the mind. It's magic and mm -hmm. hypnosis. So it's yeah. mind magic. It's all kinds of unique stuff. And it opens up with Tina Marie and Steve yeah. and Colin Foster having magic and hypnosis and also beautiful dancers in that there show. There you go. And so the cool thing is they're going to hypnotize the people from the 7 p.m. show to stay for the 9 o'clock show. Oh, so that's what Got a built-in audience. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, so if you come, make sure you wear dark glasses and don't ever open your eyes because you get hypnotized, right? There you go. And uh, Well, you might get hypnotized by my dancing at my show. Oh, just, that's right. I saw mm. you in rehearsal and you were dancing now. I, I'm... I, I don't know if I'd classify it as dancing as well, I was kind I, of moving around. It was around. amazing that you did the splits. I did. I split my pants because <laughs> I don't. I split my pants because I don't split my meals. No. Um, yeah, it's crazy the things you have to do when you move out to to Las Vegas. Um, you know, because when you get to people that come up to you and you go, "Hey, kid, do you want a show in Vegas?" And it's like, uh -huh, "Yes," and uh, just kind of holding my hat. Uh huh. So um, you know, I. You have to become a more well-rounded, haha. <laughs> well-rounded, I got it. I got it. Uh, performer, so they've put me through, uh, you know, vocal lessons and recording, and I recorded the theme song, the opening song to the show that I'm doing. It still sounds weird to me when I say my yeah, it's show. It's a song the, called Squeeze. It's the song's a, a called song Squeeze. After the show. Yeah. Done by uh, Heidi Thompson and also yeah. Gene Saronin. Oh, they're fantastic people. Love them both. And uh, so I was in the studio and and recorded, and I took some pictures and put different captions to share with folks just to kind of keep the intrigue up and then yeah added dancing on top of that so i mean it's been crazy since i've been living here in vegas i've gone through a pro wrestling fantasy camp okay now let's talk about the just for a second mm -hmm. this jake the snake what was yeah. all that about why were you traveling with a guy like that <laughs> well um let's see what's i'm trying to remember where it all started so i have this uh, friend of mine on facebook years ago uh, we've been online friends. He'd pursued professional wrestling in the independent scene. And he was a friend of yours before yeah. he even did that. Yeah. So okay. this is uh, my buddy Jason Lee, right? So, uh, and he, shout out to Jason Lee. He's out there in Kansas City doing his thing, still wrestling. And uh, so he got hurt, my buddy Jason. So he was laid up in the hospital, and he just put on Facebook, Hey, guys, I'm really bored. Uh, do you have any videos, any links, anything to keep me entertained? So I sent him uh, a 30-minute clip of my stand-up. You know, 32 minutes later, I get uh, a message. Oh, my God, dude, you're so funny. I enjoyed your clip. You should be on Comedy Central. Uh, I, I watch tons of comedy out here. You, you, why aren't you touring this and that? And I just went, oh, cool, thanks, you know, and was, okay. And so, uh, you know, he just he kind of connected on that, and he just, you know, wanted to support me however I could. A couple months go by, he sees that Jake the Snake Roberts, you know, retired professional wrestler, is now doing uh, speaking engagements and doing um, shows at comedy venues where he tells road stories. And there's some jokes in between, but it's mostly funny road stories of being a professional wrestler for 40 years. And so he does these stories on stage, and he contacted Jake the Snake. He goes, I want to bring you, Jake the Snake, to Kansas City for this show. And they said, cool, we want to go to Texas. And Jason goes, I know a guy. So Jason hit me up. And got him some venues in Texas and did like a, a nine, nine day tour, seven cities all throughout Texas. And uh, so this is where I met Jake the Snake down in uh, McAllen, Texas, the first leg of the tour. And by the way, when when we set this up, I asked Jason, I was like, hey, man, since I'm helping you out with this tour, can I open for Jake in San Antonio, my hometown, 210? And he goes, no, dude, I want you to open for the whole tour. And I was like, what? Well, that was good. So, heck yeah, right? So... Uh, we, we're down in McAllen, Texas, McAllen Theater. What's up, Mario? Uh, <laughs> uh, we're in McAllen, Texas, and Jake meets me for the first time, and at the time I was, uh, I was bigger than I am now. I was over 550 pounds, and Jake the Snake said this to me. The first thing he said, he goes, uh, he goes, oh, every day you wake up is a gift from God. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, thank you, Mr. The Snake Roberts. Like, what do you say to that, you know? And that was kind of his way of well, like... it's kind of that way for all of us in a way, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Every day we wake up and every day we have and every yeah. day we're not sick and every day we're able to accomplish something, it's a gift from yeah. God. Yeah, so I believe that. We, uh, the first night I did, 
he just wanted me to do 10 minutes, so I did 10 minutes. Then the next night, I did 15 minutes. The night after that, I did 20 minutes. And then uh, we were in San Angelo, Texas, and I did. Uh, I had to do like 40, 45 minutes. And uh, because they put the wrong time in the newspaper for the show. And so they are like, can you do that? I'm like, yeah, you know, I've been doing this long enough. So I went up there, had a great set. I got a standing ovation as the opener. Oh, wow. I got a standing ovation, and so I bring up Jake the Snake, and uh, and Jake was like, hey, save some for me, you know? And uh, and uh, so as I'm giving him the, you know, bringing him up, he kind of pulls me in. He goes, I want to talk to you in the hotel room after the show. Right? And I'm I'm the kid in the principal's office. I'm like, oh, shit, or oh, snap, what happened? It's it. Am I in trouble? You know? So the show's over. You know, we meet back, and there's like a dark cloud over me. I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be the last night. He's going to send me home, da-da-da. So get in the hotel room. He goes, what you did tonight, the standing ovation, the energy, the show you put on? I go, yeah. He goes, I want that every night. Wow. And I was like, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, let's do that, okay. And so he just wanted the best out of me because he knew that it would just make the whole show better. And I could see him getting better and better just in that first little run we did. So we, we did that run in Texas. It was leading up to the big WrestleMania in Dallas. And uh, after that, you know, we parted ways. And then he kept saying, hey, come out to Vegas. Come visit me in Vegas. Come visit me. And I thought he was being nice, you know, because I've been doing entertainment long enough. People just say that kind of stuff to be nice. And, oh, that's cool. Huh? And he kept hounding me. Hey, when are you coming out to Vegas? When are you coming out? So I came out like six weeks later. Stay, uh, I said, I have these 10 days open. He goes, yeah, stay for 10 days. I was like, that's a long time to spend at someone's house. So flew out to Vegas. One of the days was my birthday. Hung out there. And he got me uh, into juicing, him and his daughter Cody. Got me into juicing and then doing DDP yoga, which is a, um exercise kind of fitness routine, regiment, lifestyle, uh, based on a retired uh, wrestler, DDP, Diamond Dallas Page. And a lot of my fans already know about this. And uh, <clears throat> so, oh, yeah. So he gets me doing the exercise and juicing. He sees that I'm taking it seriously and, and you know, kind of doing that. And a couple days go by, uh, I come down the stairs, and this is the day after my birthday. And he goes, hey, I was talking on the phone to Dallas. And I was like, he goes, yeah, that Dallas. And I go, because <laughs> he's like, you know, these are the heroes I watch on TV. And he's just referring to them by a first name basis. And I'm like, <laughs> nerding out, right? So he goes, uh, yeah, I've been telling him about your progress, and he thinks we should document it. I go, okay, cool. And he goes, you know what that means, right? I'm like, what's up? I'm still, like, getting the crust out of my eyes, waking up. And he goes, uh, I think you should move in. To your place, to his place. To his place, from San Antonio, move in with a professional wrestler, y'all. WWE Hall of Fame class of 2014. Jake the Snake Roberts wanted me to move in with him. And that blew my mind. I was like, uh, uh. And I remember hearing him say it, and then I looked out through the uh, back door and seeing the mountains, and I just went, yeah. Because I needed that push to kind of get out of my home scene of San Antonio and Texas, because pretty much I've done everything I could in Texas of, uh, you know, comedic-wise. So I said, you know what? Yeah. So six months later, I'm moving with Jake the Snake. We're touring all across the country. I mean, you know, let's see, Seattle, L.A., Chicago, New York. I mean, all the big cities you could think of. You know, Omaha, right? Uh, is he speaking or wrestling? No, no. This is just him telling jokes and performing, so you know, on he, stage. He, he yeah. stand up also, kind mm -hmm. of yeah. talking and speaking yeah. and everything, but you're his kingpin. Yeah, I'm, I'm the opening act and, and, you know, get the crowd warmed up and riled up. And the cool thing is... The, the crowds that he brings out, they're not, a lot of them, this is their first stand-up show because they're wrestling fans. They're fitting in good. I, because I'm a pro wrestling fan, I knew how to kind of talk to them, and, and my references weren't forced. So if I was doing jokes about wrestlers and wrestling, they knew I wasn't BSing. They knew that it came from a place of love, and then I knew my stuff. Um, so and, and I got to he got me to do my first international show. So I did shows in Canada with him, and it's it still blows my mind that the stuff I used to get in trouble for in school is how I get paid now and how I pay my bills. Like it's pretty unusual, huh? That blows my mind. That's amazing, you know. So by the way, if there's any teachers out there in the Vegas area that would like me to come in and speak to Career Day, I would love to 
talk to the kids and about how the class clown that stayed the class clown and now <laughs> look where I'm at now. Took a lot of hard work and sacrifice, but you know, look where I'm at. But, Listen, uh, because you're doing what you're doing and yeah. because you're so good at it, you have some clips here we would like to look at. Yeah, so absolutely. They can see you live. They're seeing you live right now. You're very good when you talk no matter what you're talking about. Thank you. And so forth. Ten but years of retail did that. <laughs> so we're going to have Scott here play us a couple of videos here. I guess, okay, Scott. Scott. Let's see what we got with yeah. our friend Alex Kool-Aid Ansel. We're still trying to get used to the Mexicans out here. They're not like the Mexicans I'm used to out in Texas, man. The Mexicans out here don't want to be called Mexicans. It's not a PC. They want to be called what they are, Raiders fans. <laughs> so, um, I'm down there. <laughs> Raiders fans get pissy sometimes, y'all. I've heard that three times today. What's up? I'm still standing. I, uh, <laughs> actually, I did some research. The number one selling Raiders item on NFLShop.com is the Raiders ankle monitor. Did y'all know that? It's the Raiders ankle monitor. But if you smoke, please ash in an ashtray, okay? My mom had this horrible habit of ashing in cups and cans and bottles. That shit is gross. Knock it off. I remember being younger trying to sneak that drink, right? Blood, blood, blood. What the hell, mom? <laughs> right? But the joke's on my mom, because when she passed away, we put all of her ashes in a two-liter bottle. <laughs> Shut up, you didn't run. All right. Here's the thing, like, I can talk as much shit as I want, because I don't care how many tap out or affliction t-shirts you got layered up, bro. You ain't gonna fucking choke me out once I do this. What's up? Bring it. Bring it. We're still trying to get used to the Mexicans out here. They're not like the Mexicans I'm used to out in Texas, man. The Mexicans out here don't want to be called Mexicans. It's not a PC. They want to be called what they are, Raiders fans. And, <laughs> so, um, I'm down there. <laughs> Raiders fans get pissy sometimes, y'all. Like, hey, man, f you, man. I'm like, calm down. I don't want to be your third strike, all right? I, I, I've heard that three times today. What's up? I'm still standing. I, uh, <laughs> actually, I did some research. The number one selling Raiders item on NFLShop.com is the Raiders ankle monitor. Did y'all know that? It's the Raiders ankle monitor. Well, you are a hilarious guy. Oh, okay. shucks. Yeah, Thank people you. are going to come to see you. Listen, you don't want to miss the show. <laughs> I try. Now, too it's hard. motivating. It's funny. It's exciting. It's informative. Okay? Called Squeeze. Squeeze. Yeah. Yeah. And now, listen, what is this nerdcore comedy thing you were telling me about? Nerdcore nerd comedy. It's a um, thing that's very special and near, dear to my heart. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, 
I'm a nerd, y'all. Uh, I'm totally obsessed with Ninja Turtles uh, video games. Uh, throughout my life, I've had over, you know, six, close to 600 video games on 17 video game systems. I uh, love comic books, video games, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I love doing jokes about that kind of stuff. But you can't really do jokes about Ninja Turtles or Game of Thrones or stuff like that to a nightclub comedy club audience. They're just going to stare at you going, what why, are you is talking this, about? why is this virgin talking about Japanese cartoons? This is dumb. So uh, my buddy and I, Mike Suarez, teamed up in San Antonio and uh, we formed Nerdcore Comedy. And it's a comedy show by nerds for nerds and we talk about Star Wars, Star Trek, Game of Thrones, uh, you know, all that kind of nerd culture stuff and we mostly do it at conventions. So we go to comic book conventions, anime conventions, mostly throughout Texas, you know, where we're based. And uh, but now we're kind of expanding it because I'm out here in Vegas and hope to do nerdcore comedy at more conventions. And uh, now we kind of have a, a, a home in Las Vegas at the Millennium Fandom Bar. And the Millennium Fandom Bar, if you're a nerd and you're in Las Vegas, you got to check out the Millennium Fandom Bar. Uh, it's off of uh, South Las Vegas Boulevard and uh, I want to say Hoover. And the Alex, the, uh, the, the owner, is amazing. There's all kinds of cool nerdy stuff decorated throughout the whole place. And we've had uh, two very successful nerdcore comedy shows there. And the last one we filmed... Uh, by a professional production crew, and we're actually cutting together a special that has... Uh, it's called Nerdcore Comedy. Nerdcore Comedy, and it's got uh, me, uh, it's got Mike Suarez, uh, the guy that we started out together. Hey, what's up, Mike? And uh, he's back in Texas, but he's in between Texas and New York. Super proud of that guy. Joe Calise, who started out uh, doing comedy uh, in San Antonio. We kind of started around the same time, but then he kind of went to Colorado for a bit, but... He's now in Vegas as well. Been here in Vegas for three years now, three four years. Check out Joe Calise. If you're in Vegas, check out Joe Calise, y'all. He is hilarious. Some of the stuff he says, you're you're, you're gonna pray for him, but it's so well written and so funny. Uh, so he's on the show and he's done some of the convention shows with us. And Daniel Howard, super talented, super funny comedian who also plays uh, guitar and he does kind of like nerdy songs. And he does more than that, but for the show. Nerdcore, that's what we had. And, and these are the jokes. They're just so much fun to do because that audience gets every little part of the little joke here where if I did some Ninja Turtle jokes to me, you'd be like, well, thank you for doing those jokes, Alex. I don't get why they're funny, but that, you know. And it's great to kind of play that kind of stuff for, for that audience. So Nerdcore, baby. Be on the lookout for that. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to be at more conventions uh, doing more Nerdcore comedy. So you comedy. like doing it. I love it. I love it. And those shows we... We don't get paid, or we haven't gotten paid for them, for some of them, but the satisfaction I get from performing them has been amazing, you know. So, for me, comedy, you know, the money, it's not about the money. It's like, so this nerd, is what I love to do. Core. A nerd is, uh, what's different about a nerd than a person that maybe doesn't consider themselves a nerd? Well, I think, as you know, a lot has changed over the last, especially the last 20 years. Like, you know, becoming a nerd is not a bad thing anymore no. or have negative connotation. I remember that I got called a nerd because I loved video games in, in middle school and high school. And now it's just part of the norm, you know. Now all the big movies that are coming out are all comic book movies. You yeah, know? and then the nerd's kind of the smart guy, right? He's a that little too. more intelligent than most people. Yeah, well, those, you know, those, that's when you get into the differences between nerds and geeks. You know, and there's some, some differences there. But, you know, a lot of that stuff is just, it's more accepted now to, to be into, um, you know, the Japanese cartoons and comic books and, and playing uh, board games and, you know, Dungeons and Dragons and, and computer stuff. So it's kind of more accepted to, to be proficient in all those kind of things. So, yeah, but Nerdcore Comedy, it's almost like a passion project that, um, you know, we've been doing it close to, you know, eight to ten years now. Wow. and uh just want to keep doing more of those sh shows as well. So Okay, now this nerdcore comedy and mm -hmm. the other things you do, evidently you stay motivated no matter what. Mm -hmm. What are your golden aspirations? Um, it, I just want to keep performing in front of more and more people. You know, I want to get you up. love it. You love standing up yeah. in front of people and telling your story. Yeah, making them laugh. Making like, them uh, laugh and informing that rush, them in a that, funny way. Yeah, and, the, you know, that getting that instant reaction, that instant hit, that, that high, I mean, when I talked about earlier about getting that standing ovation working with Jake, I mean, that was just an intense, just gah, you know. Uh, I, I can't, you know, just imagine all the all the <laughs> all the best feelings that the worst drugs can do to you. That's what stand up does for me, 
You know, I'm just like, ah, oh, I got to keep chasing it. So, um, you know, maybe one day go out to L.A. or uh, definitely like to do more shows in L.A. Uh, maybe be in a movie. Wow. You know, that'd be kind of cool. But if, if I could just make a living just doing what I love and that's getting up on stage, you know. That'd be awesome. Are the people normally pretty polite to you and friendly? And Most of the time. Yeah. Sometimes people, when they see me making fun of myself, they think it's okay that I'm inviting them to make fun of myself. Yeah. And I just, I shut that down real quick. And I go, no, buddy, I get paid to, like, you know, talk crap about myself. You're <laughs> just some jackass in the front row, you know. But, um, yeah, that doesn't happen. You know, nine times out of ten, people are always like, oh, my God, you're great. You know, this and that, but you can't just let... So somehow, yeah. Pete and Dan Setgast just mm -hmm. found you one night, huh? Well, yeah, because they heard about me, so they came out to the show and watched me, and they're like, uh, and Dan especially, you know, he's like, oh, you're very funny, this is great, and uh, and uh, would you like your own show? And I was like, yeah, of course, and they're talking about making me, <laughs> making me into a hologram, and I was like, oh, my God, you mean I don't have to, you know, <laughs> I don't have to be a dead rapper to be a hologram? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to be the first hologram that weighs like seven pounds. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> so I could possibly be a hologram, too. But uh, it, it, like I said, it still doesn't seem real, man. I, I, it'd be cool to, uh, you know, see my face on top of a taxi cab ad or in a big, you know, jumbotron on the strip. I, I can't wait. Yo, check out my Instagram for that one because that's going to blow me yeah, Pete's away. already, Pete and Ron and those guys, they're yeah. already ordering stuff on you. That's amazing. Like, uh, and, you know, it's just hard work. I mean, they're, you know, I used to run a Monday night open mic at a bar called Retox in San Antonio, and it, it was almost a chore. I'm like, why am I doing this? And then I just remembered every performance makes you better. You know, if, if, the right. environment, the conditions aren't the best, then you have to perform so much better to make up for that energy or whatever's going on in the room. And, you know, just, you know, I love it. I learned a lot. And now, you know, I'm trying to share that with uh, comics that seek me for advice and try to help them out as best as possible and learn from my mistakes. It's good to turn around and try to help the other person. Absolutely. Tell me Absolutely. about this thing around your neck. Oh, yeah, this is the, the Kool-Aid. That? That's the Kool-Aid Man piece. That's my charm Kool necklace. Kool-Aid Man. Yeah. I, um, so years ago, a rapper uh, named T-Pain, famous for his auto-tune stuff, had uh, a music video where he had a giant Kool-Aid Man necklace. Is, is that what the Kool-Aid Man looks like? Yeah, yeah. But his was huge. Right, who who he's, invented the Kool-Aid Man? Uh, well, okay, so it used to be called... Fr I did my research on this. So it's from Nebraska, Kool-Aid is. Is, is and, it really about Kool-Aid? Kool-Aid yeah. the drink? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the Kool-Aid Man. Okay, that's the okay. mascot All that's right. on the drink. And um, so it used to be called Fruit Smack. And uh, so guess why they can't use that anymore? No, because yeah. uh, <laughs> that's a hate crime nowadays. <laughs> anyway... So, um, yeah, so this rapper T-Pain had a giant Kool-Aid Man necklace, and uh, my buddy Blair Thompson, another super funny comic back home in San Antonio, he's like, dude, you gotta get it. You got, Have you seen that necklace? It's insane. And so just on a whim, I typed into Google Kool-Aid Man necklace, and sure enough, found one on Amazon. And that's it. Yeah, and, and I asked friends of mine, I'm like, should I get this? This is kind of dumb. And they're like, why don't you have seven right now? Get your Kool-Aid Man neck. And so uh, this is probably like my fourth or fifth one that I've had. What, what, what happens to them? Where do they go? Uh, you, jewels fall out or they lose their shine. Uh -huh. And it's costume jewelry. So just, you know, it's not meant to last forever. But well, it looks good. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe I get some of this uh, strip money here and get a real one made. What? I should probably get a car first, though, right? Yeah. I don't well, yeah, you know. You have a car. I saw your car. Oh, no, that's my roommate's car. Yeah, I'm oh, baby that's balling. Your roommate's yeah. Car. Oh. Yeah, I, I, and it's a Toyota Yaris. What's up, ladies? Uh, we're on a go kart track right now, so I hope they don't just start putting numbers on it and put it on the track. I'm like, hey, that's my roommate's car. I don't think so he'll appreciate that. So your roommate is in the trunk? Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, uh, you know, a lot of this I couldn't uh, have done. Without my buddy Mike Toomey, my roommate, who I met through Jake, because Mike Toomey is a retired WW uh, at the time WWF referee, and so he used to you know ref the big matches. He ref matches with Hulk Hogan and Macho Man and did all you, that because stuff. Because of your size, did you ever try to wrestle <coughs> yourself? Did you uh, it's wrestle? funny. I did a wrestling camp. You did? Yeah. Uh, Jake the Snake got me involved in that, and Jake actually uh, helps out with a wrestling school. And uh, Snake Pit Wrestling, check it out if you're local. And uh, they run what's called Fantasy Slam Pro Wrestling Fantasy Camp. And uh, I was in their uh, promo video, their infomercial, to sell the camp. Because they were like, hey, 
there's people like you all across the nation with your body type, and I'm like, I know what you're doing. Like, you don't have to sell me on it. <laughs> so they teach you some wrestling basics on how to lock up, run the ropes, and cut promos and create a character. So I got to kind of live out some of those things and, and learn some ring stuff, pro wrestling. So, like, I, yeah, I think I mentioned earlier, since, uh, since living in Vegas for about a year and a half now, you know, I've done a pro wrestling camp. Uh, I've done vocal lessons and now dance lessons, and uh, so to all those performers out there, all my my friends uh, that are comedians, if you think you're going to get by on jokes alone, there better be some damn good jokes. <laughs> I bet you so yeah, so you got it's you know you got to really expand uh, your expertise out there and, and get. I mean, I've I've gotten better with my photography and then with my video editing. Well, talking about yeah. your photography, you're also a graphic artist. Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, school for graphic design. Did you graduate in graphic design? Here's the joke Are you about that. That, that profession. <laughs> well, uh, the joke I do is, um, you know, because uh, it kind of goes in with what we talk about in Squeeze about how in this country, it's easier to get diabetes than it is to get a college degree. And I go, guess which one I have. It's the college degree. There you go. But when it comes to graphic design, the joke I do is, uh, it's like, well, if you can forge your own, you know, degree, if you can forge your own diploma, guess what? You graduated, buddy. You know, <laughs> like if you if you could sneak out of ninja school, yo, you graduated. All right. Um, so you know, I uh, and that's how I got on early in my career. That's how I got onto a lot of shows because I would offer to make a flyer for the show. I would mm -hmm. offer, hey, I'll build a website make a flyer, blah, blah, blah. And then it got to a while where I didn't have to make a flyer for a show. You do your own promotion a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to. You have, I don't have a team. I don't have money to pay other people to do that stuff. I'm, that's all me, baby. So I do all the videos you see me edit and put out there on my social media. That's all me editing it and cutting it and using my equipment. And then now I kind of... now Dan Sitgas and Unicorn and Vegas Entertainment yeah. Partners, they're kind of pushing you along now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're... Yeah. Uh, yeah wait, can't wait to start working with them on that kind of stuff, too. And, and uh, you know, for a while when I had the time, I would offer to other comics in the scene and say, hey, if you need clips to be put online, let me help you out. If you need some headshots, let me do that. And uh, I got to show a lot of love to the LA Comedy Club inside the Stratosphere. They've been kind of like my new home You've club. You've worked there a few times. I work there a lot. There, it's, it's Like I said, it's kind of like my new home club. Tell these people, and when's the next time you're going to appear at the LA Comedy Club at the Stratosphere up on the second floor? They have a show at 8 and 10, I think. Yep. Uh, probably yeah. next Tuesday at 8. And then, But I'll be there tomorrow night on Friday to film a super funny, hilarious headliner, J.C. Karayas. You have to go see J.C. Karayas. But you're going to be there yourself yeah. maybe next Tuesday. Yeah, performing. Yeah. At 8. Mm -hmm. And they, they keep me in the rotation. And uh, so I, I get, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to, to get plenty of work to where they'll call me to kind of like fill in. If and they do really want to see this guy, you really want to see this guy and how funny he is and wild he is. Do we have yeah. more video? No, okay. There we go. So we played some of your video. Yeah. But the fact is, you are the video. You do Thank it anyhow. You. Seeing you yeah. is the real thing. Yeah. Okay. It's... Now, uh, <laughs> give us a couple of little renditions of what you might say in our show. Just a couple of minutes of of how you might uh, approach the weight loss in our show. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, mentioned our early. Uh, Earlier I mentioned about how it's easier to get a college, uh, or I'm sorry, that it's easier to get diabetes than it is a college degree in this country, and that just kind of blows my mind. And, and it almost, almost makes me think, you know how we have commercials here about the starving kids in Africa, how they want you to donate money? Do they have commercials in Africa that show the fat kids in the states that need money for insulin? Oh, man. Do they have that kind of stuff I over there? <laughs> but, you know, I... I just kind of look at the American lifestyle and, and how crazy stuff has gotten. And I think a lot of it goes back to, you know, did it start when, when Taco Bell had the, you know, the double-decker taco? That's when they take a taco, which is already awesome, and they put it inside of a, another taco, right? Then they had the stuffed crust pizza. They still have it now, don't they? Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. And uh, on cheat day, Sundays... Uh, so now there's stuffed crust pizza, and Arby's now has a sandwich that has a whole petting zoo on there. You know, the McRib is making more comebacks than Cher's tour. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, especially Las Vegas, too. Las Vegas is um, kind of America's food court, but in the best way possible, because there's so much amazing, awesome food. You look on the strip, the biggest names in food are all on the strip. You know, you got what, Gordon Ramsay. Uh, Giada De Laurentiis, Unbelievable. Right? Man. Robert Irvine. Cooks. Uh, yeah. Amazing celebrity chefs. And then you also have uh, White Castle. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, you got that whole bevy on there. And I've, I've tried to get used to, 
you know, getting here and being in Vegas, you know, uh, I went to a casino the other day I didn't care for, and I know I've shown a lot of love, so, you know, this is, I'm not trying to be negative, but this uh, casino didn't have any, uh, no blackjack tables, uh, there were no slot machines, no ashtrays. In a casino? In a casino. And I was like, what kind of crappy casino is this? And they said, sir, this is Planet Fitness. Oh. And I, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that oh. makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. So, but, um, you know, Vegas, Vegas has been crazy, man. I, you know, it never rains here. So I, I think I've been living in Vegas long enough that if I do get hit by rain, I flinch and I go, who the hell did that? What was that? I'm, I'm going to get, oh, that was rain. I remember rain. Yeah, I remember that. And now, what is it, February? Now it's a beautiful time of year. If you're coming to visit Vegas, do it this time of year. Don't wait till August. Don't do that. That's the dumbest it thing ever. It's been a great season, hasn't it? Yeah. It's been warm. Other people have been freezing and yeah. everything, and we're getting I, it. I sleep with the window open. You do? I do. I sleep with the window open. It's great. But I got woken up this morning because uh, my neighbor was like, what are you doing in my car? <laughs> and uh, so I was like, you're rude. You're rude. <laughs> But, um, yeah, there's, you know, of course, there's all kinds of awesome stuff to do in Vegas. You know, marijuana's legal, which, uh, I didn't, whatever. Marijuana's been legal for white people for, like, ten years. So well, in your show, Squeeze, you, you act, you dance, you yep. tell jokes. Yep. You actually even sing. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I you try. I try. with the girls. Yeah. You know, and they, they do all that with you. And you have all these exciting talents that you do. Yeah. And it's tremendous, okay? And then right before you, of course, over there at Senior Frogs is... The unbelievable show mm -hmm. of Beyond Reality, Beyond. Magic and Hypnotism. How, how can you say it without Reed. doing this? Yeah, and and, and then Colin Beyond Foster reality. and the Dancing Girls and all that. And that's yeah. over at Senior Frogs. Yep. And then over at Valley's once again. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you and I have seen those shows come together. We've oh, helped absolutely. those shows come together. Yeah. I've helped put those shows together along with uh, uh, everybody else. That's Steve Arnold that's yeah. in it and Pete Demas and all these guys. Now now we're out trying to promote these shows. We need you yeah. people to come out and support us, right? Absolutely. We need some support. Yeah. You're going to see some great shows. Definitely and check out Carl above at oh, the Carl was it 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Yeah. 10 o'clock. Yes. Carl above super Every day funny of the dude. Wednesday. Yeah. And then also you're going to see That's Vegas. Yeah. And you're going to see a great impressionist. You're going to see Britney Spears, tribute artist. And you're going to see Adam Flowers, a tremendous yeah. magician. I'm going to put you on the spot. You are? Y yeah. Uh -oh. Can I... Uh, can and you're going to see E. Casanova, Michael Jackson. There you go. Can yeah. I... On Saturday nights, when my show is dark, you're going to yeah. let me perform with Carl a little bit? Oh, yes. I All would. right. Oh, I he said you yes. Should. Yes. Heck yeah. Yeah. I w we, we actually, in the way Dan and, and Nicole look at this, they actually like you or any of the other people as a guest, even in That's uh, yeah. Vegas. Oh, that'd uh, be they, down they to. They like yeah. to see people share their talent and do their yeah. thing and make, make it exciting for everybody. So uh, That's Vegas is at 2 o'clock every day except Wednesday. Okay. And again at the window showroom over at Bally's. It's upstairs. It should be sponsored by Microsoft if you think about it. Yeah. Microsoft Windows, Windows Showroom. Window, oh, we should do See? that. They should sponsor that. In that same showroom. I'm business-minded, son. What's up? <laughs> In that same showroom, they have Wayne Newton. Yeah. And they have the Bronx Wanderers. Yeah. And they have Paranormal. Which you took me to. I loved it. The oh. Bronx Wanderers. Oh, aren't they great? Yeah, that was oh, awesome. Oh, it's a yeah. father and some sons. And yeah, and the friends. Yeah. unbelievable show. Yeah. And uh, so Ken Walker. He's the one yeah. that has that showroom and is working with Dan Setgast and yeah. Nicole to kind of bring us all these shows. So listen, somebody has gone and done the extraordinary, and that is Dan Setgast and Nicole creating yeah. Vegas Entertainment Partners and putting some feeling, feeling dunk. together. Yeah. yeah. And so you're a part of all this. Yeah. They went out and found you yep. and brought you in and said, hey, we want to do a show. Yeah, they invited you. me to their house for, that, for, that, for that's, dinner. That's and, unusual, uh, isn't it? That, that yeah. is weird. Like, usually if you get contact for a gig, it's just, you know, here's an email here or, you know, you kind of get reference, reference, reference. But for them to come out and kind of handpick me and then they even told me, they're like, we've seen you a couple times and you do, you know, really well every time and we want to work with you. Would you be open to this? And I'm just well, like, Well, they uh, like a guy like you yeah. that, that carries a lot of weight. Yeah, there I you mean, go. I mean, uh, yeah. 
That has you a lot of bravado. Okay. You mean carries a lot of talent, yeah. right? Well, talent, talent, talent. That's what there I mean. There you go. I, uh, yeah, t- yeah. Okay. My knees carry a lot of talent. Uh, <laughs> so I have a strong you, neck to carry my big head when around. When you normally do your stand-up, do you mm-hmm. normally do the whole show by yourself, or is there normally two or three comics? Yeah, two or three four? comics, yeah. But now, so. in this case, besides the beautiful dancers, yeah. you got three dances in the show, Yeah. right? Yeah. And besides that, you're the show. Damn right. And you're out there hitting it and doing it. And so you people got to come out, and you got to listen to this, how to lose weight in a very funny, yeah, great way. Yeah, it's going to be an ab workout because you're going to be laughing the whole yeah. time. And you're going to see this man dance. You're going to see this man sing. Yeah. You're going to see this man do all of it, right? Damn right. I think you uh, and you did the splits once, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe oh, yeah. like you said, you split your pants. But I, I it's, it's, for the like big, it's for the big finale, so yeah. I might even throw in some twerking. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Throw him your uh, email. So uh, they're, oh, yeah. Or you're at least your website. There How do go. they get a hold uh, of uh, AlexAnsel.com. You're watching this on Facebook on my thing, so you're already locked in on there. Please feel free to share my stuff. That helps me out a lot. That boosts me a lot. A lot of people uh, get on that. So AlexAnsel.com or at y 2 kool Aid on any of my social media stuff. And this is so. Johnny Stewart, and we want you to come out and see our four shows put on by our unbelievable uh, Unicorn Network and Vegas Entertainment Partners. We love you all. We appreciate it. Come and thanks for coming and seeing our show. And here's my new friend forever because we're producing him and he's one of the biggest produced guys in the whole business. There you go. See you later. Oh, I thanks. produce. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>